What up, guys? Bench Buddies are back, and Brady and I are going to be doing our second Power Ranks of the year, our first in the season, and almost every team has played at least 10 games this year so far, and we're going to rank them based off of those 10 games. Brady, I'll start first, but before we start, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on our videos as we're trying to get to 50, and once we get to 50, we're going to be doing a giveaway uh, just a little cash giveaway. So make sure you hit that subscribe button um, and stay up to date with us. But we'll get right into the video now. Coming in at 30th, you got New Orleans Pelicans. And it's pretty much been a disaster just with the whole Zion situation. Um, Pelicans fans are already thinking they don't have a shot at the playoffs already. And who knows how the season, you know, is going to play out, you know, with Brandon Ingram pretty much being the only guy that's really on this team it feels like um I don't know it's just gonna be it looks like through 11 games for them it's gonna be a rough season going on the 29th we got the uh the one and nine Houston Rockets you know I wasn't wasn't too up on this team at the start of the year didn't expect them to be one and nine I think they're really young they have a lot to prove Jalen Green putting up numbers but I still don't think that this team is is going to provide much at the end of the year and you know we'll check out that Cade Cunningham Jalen Green matchup coming up. Real excited for that one. We'll see if it uh, influences any Rookie of the Year awards or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, Houston Rockets, not too sold on them. Don't think they're going to be that great this year. Coming in at 28th, we got the Detroit Pistons, who, you know, the record doesn't really show how good they are, I would say. You know, they competed with Brooklyn pretty much till the last few minutes of that game. Um, Cade Cunningham had his best game in that game. And he's been a kind of a work in progress. You know, they don't want to rush their number one pick. Um, and his injury, what I think he what set up the first three or four games. Yeah. Um, but you know, he's looked good um in his latest game against that Nets team. And he was really stepping it on late, um, going at Harden, going at KD. So he's not scared of these, you know, superstars in the league, which is a good attitude, especially for this, you know, bad boys 2.0 team, you could say. Um, that's what they're kind of going for you know, this year and next year, you know, let teams know that they're not a team to be mess around with. Um, but unfortunately this year, it's just not going to be, you know, a playoff contending year, at least through these nine games that they've played. Um, but definitely some young talent and something worth monitoring over the next few uh, months. So 27th, we have the Orlando Magic, you know, with the record three and eight, I feel like they're probably the happiest team in NBA to be happy with a three and eight record. I feel like no one expected them to actually provide numbers. You know, Franz as a rookie putting up numbers, uh, Cole Anthony, you know, he's doing, he's doing great this year too. I know we talked about Aaron Gordon leaving. I think, you know, that was a great move for them. I think they're on the right, the right road. It's going to take some time, but I mean, three and eight, I'd be, I'd be happy sitting three and eight as the Orlando magic right now. 26, you got the Timberwolves and it just seems like, you know, they just, can't make the most of their opportunities. You know, with Carl Anthony Towns, who's a top 10 player in the league, I would say. Um, Anthony Edwards, who's been playing really well this year. It just seems like they can't gel together as a team. Um, and the record just never shows how good this team actually could be. Um, and it's just been tough for the Timberwolves over the last few years, just with all the promise around this team, young guys. Um, it just really hasn't shown. And hopefully they can pick things up. Uh, later this year coming in at 25th we have the san antonio spurs you know a neck and neck team over in the west with the uh the timberwolves but i think they're in a similar spot you know you got coach pop one of the most respected nba coaches but uh at the end of the day i just don't think the talent's there and i don't think that they're going to be a contender for a while until they start landing some big names again but um i don't know i mean we'll see how the draft goes in the next couple of years i feel like san antonio is not a huge destination spot for people in general but you know 25th as expected well uh hopefully they get better soon i guess 24th you get the thunder and you know three and six is a pretty solid start to this team josh giddy struggled in his first few games but he's really coming on now um he's looked pretty solid i would say over the last week and you know his tiktok game is phenomenal <laughs> Dude, dude bags all the women and he, he's bringing a different kind of culture to Oklahoma City that uh, I bet you the front office didn't see coming. But nonetheless, um, the other players on this team, nothing really much to talk about. 
Um, but we all know that they have, what, I think 12 or 13 draft picks in the next three drafts. So expect this mm -hmm. Thunder team to compete, I would say, by 2025. Um, you know, even if half those picks hit, like that's a pretty solid starting lineup, even six men. Sure, for sure. So coming up next, we got the Charlotte Hornets. I mean, five, five and seven, but, you know, this, this team is making moves. I said earlier I wasn't too sure about, you know, the Scary Terry signing him for another flight, like four years, but dude's put up the numbers they expected. Miles Bridges is having a all-star start to a year. Dude's going crazy. You got LaMelo, Gordon, you know, Hayward. I think this team's good. I think they're on the upcoming and I think they're, they're young and that's the most important part. And I think the future is going to be bright for Charlotte if they can find some pieces to glue together, but you know, five and seven, I, I think this team's still solid. I think this team's still a sleeper for, a playing game in the in the playoffs as well. Coming in at 22nd, you got the Indiana Pacers who have looked pretty uh, sluggish to start the year. Um, so bonus, you know, is a solidified big man who everyone knows and worries about. But really after that, who's going to be that next guy that's going to step up for this Pacers team? Um, it seems like, you know, TJ McCollum could be the guy or – Maybe not. I don't know. It just kind of depends on the night um, and matchups, really, um, as this Pacers got, team has gotten off to a slow start. So coming in at 21st, I think the most unexpected team to be down far on this list so far is the Atlanta Hawks. Um, I, mean, I think it's plain and simple. This team is just struggling right now. You know, Trey, Trey Young isn't putting up quite the numbers that people anticipated, whether that's due to the the change in officiating or it's just uh, you know a rough start to the year i'm not too down on this team not figuring it out i think that they'll be fine they'll be in the playoffs but uh as for right now definitely some work to do but i don't know not too worried about these guys and you could say the same about the celtics here at 20th um pretty much kind of same thing slow start as Jalen brown and jason tatum still still you know the, the guys of the franchise but a lot of controversy and Marcus Smart, you know, the, those guys need to pass the ball more, get guys more open looks. Um, so it could be a chemistry thing in the locker room that we don't really see. Uh, could, some, you know, develop. Uh, some Ben Simmons talks over there in Boston too. Some, mm -hmm. some big trade rumors over there. So uh, we'll see, we'll see what they do to. Mm -hmm, for sure. But, you know, right now after 10 games, four and six, I would say, you know, they're not too happy with that record, but. Obviously, it's only 10 games in a long season to go. So next up, we have the Sacramento Kings. I know that you touched base on Deer and Fox. Guy's an absolute dog. You know, there's no denying that. To be five and six for the Sacramento Kings, I feel like that's that's something to be celebratory about. You know, Buddy Hield, great shooter. I I don't know. I guess I feel like they do have some sleepers on this team, you know, that that don't get a lot of recognition that probably I don't even recognize as much. But I think this might – be an upcoming like potentially close to how the jazz are you know you don't really hear much about them might win some games here and there scrappy team but i think they're on the right road so on 19th but yeah progress being made 18th got the blazers and plain and simple dame and cj just haven't you know been playing well i feel like you know the theme so far is these stars haven't been playing well um up to you know what up to what we're used to seeing and I think that's just due to, you know, new officiating, uh, some league rules tweaks here. But obviously it's early. It's 10 games. Um, I expect this Blazer team to still make the playoffs, being a lower seed in the West. Um, no, no panic over there in Portland for sure. So the Toronto Raptors are 17th coming in at eight in the East. You know, I didn't, I didn't think this team would be that productive this year. I feel like um, – Six and five is solid for them. I still think that Siakam is going to be traded or end up on a different team here in the next couple of years. I don't think he's going to be there much longer. I think their winning days are really over, but to be ranked 17th right now, I feel like that that's a little bit surprising. You know, I mean, 10 games in, but I don't know. You can't, can't really go sleeping on the Raptors. They'll come out every now and again on a night and just shoot the lights out. So Coming in at 16th, get the Clippers. And, you know, who really knows what's going on with the Clippers? Um, it seems like every year there's always some drama, some injuries, you know, some, there's something off about the Clippers every year. 
And then when it always comes to the playoff time, everyone just expects them to go to the finals and, you know, nothing like nothing happened. Well, you know, with Kawhi, who knows Kawhi, like Kawhi knows himself best and he probably doesn't even know what he's going to do tomorrow. Um, and that's pretty much what you can say about this Clippers team as well, because you don't know what performance you're going to get out of this team. You know, they're five and four right now. And I think that's surprisingly, in my opinion, a little better than you would think. Mm-hmm. Um, just with how much talent, I guess you could say, talent, you could say with quotation marks around that they have. Um, but nonetheless, um, I think 16th is a fair ranking for the Clippers so far. It's coming up 15th. We got the Lake show. Uh, I don't. I don't even know really where to start with this team other than saying I think that Russell Westbrook is the prime problem in L.A. right now. I think that this team is a championship contender. You know, it was a bunch of vets that nobody knew if they could hang. I think they can hang. I think it's Russell Westbrook that's a problem. I think, uh, you know, LeBron being out with uh, the, the, the foot or the leg injury, I think that's hurting him. But even when he gets back, it's going to be like, LeBron versus the opponent and Russell Westbrook because this guy just doesn't seem like he's a great he's a great teammate you know I'm sure he's nice to have in the locker room and whatnot but he doesn't blend well with anyone else's game he's a he's a stat chaser so I don't I don't think the Lakers are going to pan out to be as great as what you know everyone wants them to be but I I hope for the best Melo shooting the lights out you know LeBron's probably gonna have a great year hopefully AD stays healthy but uh yeah Russ has got to go Russ has got to go and at 14, you got, you know, one of my favorites for MVP this year in John Morant. And nonetheless, like, he's had a great season so far, but his surrounding cast this year has just been, you know, pretty much surreal. Uh, a 6-4 and four record, you know, could have won a few games here. Could have won a few more games, whatever. Um, but I just think that this team is slowly going to build throughout the year and potentially be even a – top five top four team in the west come you know all-star break come end of the year and if they can keep continuing on this pace i think that they can definitely achieve that goal so next up we have the surprising cleveland Cavs. you know at 13th i think um you know marketing definitely helping out this team jared allen definitely helping out this team it does hurt that you know i think We established Colin Sexton out for the year. That's definitely going to hurt them a lot. But, I mean, just for starters, who would have thought the Cavs would be here at 7-4 and right now a couple weeks in? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I think progress is being made. Ricky Rubio is going to have to pick it up. I guess keep the train moving. I I still don't think that they're going to be anything crazy come come midseason form. But, like I said, good good start to be 7-4. and Coming in at 12 to get the Denver Nuggets. Um, and Jokic, you know, same old Jokic, but really after that, it's kind of meh, like, you don't know. Um, that's why I think they dropped a little bit from our preseason, um, still six and four, got a winning record Mm. and, you know, it's really going to depend on how Michael Porter Jr. does, um, after that huge contract they gave him, um, to go along with the Joker and moving forward, I expect this team, you know, to still be in playoff contention, like nothing to worry about. Obviously, it's only 10 games, and they could be really 8-2. and two. Um, But, you know, the Nuggets still going to be a decent team. And even when they get Jamal Murray back, I think that's going to be a huge boost. Um, we don't know when it is. You know, it still hasn't been determined. But uh, when they get him back, I think this team will really take off. Sure. So coming in at ranking 11th, we have the Milwaukee Bucks. And notice that, I mean, they do have that 4-6 that and six record. But, you know, I don't think there's a single person out there right now that would say that they're actually worried about Milwaukee's situation. I think Giannis is going to do fine. You know, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, it's, it's, it's essentially one of the same teams. You know, we just watched the team win a ring. I, I don't see any reason why they couldn't even go to the conference finals. You know, I think this team's going to be fine this year. I could see them in the finals again. But, you know, I think it's a rough start. Definitely got to turn the ship around, but they'll be all right. Coming in at 10th, you get the Washington Wizards. And let's just say Bradley Beal is carrying this team on his back. Yeah, we know he did it last year too. But this year, it's just a new swagger to this Washington Wizards team. Uh, Beal, you know, obviously he's played everything like he normally has every game. But really his surrounding cast, just like um, I've said a few teams ago, you know, 
in for the Grizzlies, you know, it's really been actually helping him rather than be all last year putting up 45 and triple double numbers and they lose him by 20. Um, and that's what, you know, led him to this 10th ranking and a seven and three record. So next up, we have the New York Knicks coming at ninth. I'm, I think this team's fun to watch. I think Madison Square Garden goes crazy. I think Kemba being in Madison Square Garden was the right move for their situation. Um, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't totally sold on Julius Randle last year. Mm -hmm. I thought it was maybe just a good year, but I feel like he's doing what he needs to do for the team. On top of that, you have RJ Barrett, you know, Obi Toppin. I think once again, you know, Kemba's a little bit more of a, on the vet side. I think you've got for a majority though, a young promising team right here. And I think they're going to be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And also you could link uh, Ben Simmons to this team too. Very you true. Know, you know, with Fournier, they could also ship him and maybe another young guy, but mm -hmm. definitely uh, Ben Simmons rumors to watch out for. But coming in at eight, you got the Dallas Mavericks and Luca, same old Luca. But you know, then it's after that, it's the same old Mavs and yeah. I'm just still on the Porzingis needs to go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's, he's still a great player, but I just don't think it's a good system fit. And I think that, I think Bradley Beal will be an interesting name come trade, trade deadline. Um, you know, ship Porzingis for Beal. Honestly, that's a win on both sides. If you're a Wizards fan, you're a Mavs fan. Um, if you're trying, if at least if you're trying to win it all this year, uh, it's a deal to make, but if not, um, you know, who, who knows? Maybe Beal would want to re would uh, want to sign a free agency with this team, but definitely worth noting that this Mavs team looks a lot better than they have um, in recent years when they've you know scraped into the playoffs. Uh, and I expect them to be a middle seed come you know around April. So next up, we've got the Chicago Bulls. So preseason ranking, we had them at seventeenth. Right now, we put them at seventh with a record of seven and three. I think this team's fun to watch. You know, we had them preseason ranked that low because you really didn't know what to expect you got a bunch of new guys in a whole new system in a whole new city but I think it's working great Lonzo's providing great DeMar, De, DeMar DeRozan you know you got a bunch of guys out here that are really hooping and uh I I stand by saying I think this is a four or five seed in the in the playoffs come that time I think that they got the right tools and I think that I think truly that these guys just want to win and that's what it comes down to too but I'm, I'm in on the Bulls this year. Coming in at six to get the Phoenix Suns, and I think they're a little hungover from that playoff run um, going to the finals. Nothing really to write home to mom about here on this team. Um, you know, pretty much right where the, we expected them to be at the beginning of the year, and they're just slowly kind of coasting to that six and three record because, you know, Aiton's missed a few games with some bruises and you know, he's not been playing every game. And Chris Paul, um, just kind of going through the motions out there. Same with Booker. But, you know, obviously these these guys aren't even playing their best ball and they're still three games above uh, 500. Um, you know, as the season gets going, I think we're going to pick it up some more and still be a top team in the West. So next up, coming in the fifth rank, we've got the Utah Jazz at seven and three. I don't understand how this team is so consistent year in and year out. Like you hear about Donovan Mitchell, you hear about the defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, Jordan Clarkson wins a sixth man, but like what else? You don't hear about much else. And these guys provide every single year. It's like they're going out every single game, really trying to win. And I think that's why they're such a respected team at this point, because you know, they're going to be in the playoffs. They don't miss the playoffs anymore. They're always in there. So I think, I think the Utah Jazz, I got to I gotta give it to them, you know, deserve the fifth ranking, and I, I got high hopes for them now. Coming in at fourth, you get the Miami Heat, and playing a little better than I guess all of us would have thought, you know, coming up with that 7-3 and three record. And Jimmy Butler has looked like that dude again, um, pretty much back in his prime Bulls days, I guess you could say. And Jimmy, I mean, with his surrounding cast now, there's no reason for – all these Miami Heat fans to buy in for a championship run, um, especially with Tyler Hero, you know, lighting it up in the preseason, which was a good thing some signs to come this year. You know, not obviously preseason numbers for him this year, but he's still being a solid six man off the bench. Um, and let's talk about Kyle Lowry and how much he's already meant to this team. Um, having a true leader at point guard knows how, what it takes to get to playoffs, playoff mm -hmm. runs, wins the championship. 
And I think that's just going to be such a great move come the end of the year. Um, and shout out to Dylan Butler out there, huge Jimmy Butler fan. And I just think that he, he's all in on the, on the heat too. Um, so hopefully, you know, they can get it done for him this year. So taking the third ranking spot is the one seed out of the East, the Philadelphia 76ers. I think the 8-3 record's great. I think it's a little deceiving because it's early. I think that there's still a lot of Ben Simmons drama, and it obviously hurts them. You know, whether he is on the floor or not, it's going to affect them in some way. And although their record's 8-3, I still think that the whole Ben Simmons situation is really harming them, and it won't go away till he's gone. But on top of that, you know, they beat the Bulls twice. I feel like the games that they have won, they've they've just they've just been weird on. You know, it's like they play the Bucks tonight, they beat the Bulls twice, and Bede's averaging really good numbers again. But I I wanna I, I'm taking in a seven game series, I'm taking, you know, the Bulls over them still. I'm still taking the Nets, I'm still taking all these teams. I'm coming in at two. You get the Nets who I'm pretty much think right where we expect them to be. Um Still no Kyrie. Still don't know what's going on there. And KD and Harden pretty much been playing how we all expected them to be. And Joe Harris has been lighting it up. Um, and Blake Griffin, you know, is an interesting name to talk about. <laughs> and I don't know. This team just – they just find ways to win. And, you know, nothing really new happening with this next team. So that leaves the one seed spot. The Golden State Warriors coming in at 9-1. and one. Curry's off to an MVP type season, you know, like he's this, this guy's literally averaging 28, seven and seven a game and doesn't even have Clay Thompson. He won't even be back till December, January. This team just knows how to win. I think it, I think it comes down to that plain and simple. Draymond knows how to win. James Wiseman hasn't even been around that much. There's just a winning culture. It's a winning team. And, uh, you know, I know, Quinny, you know, made that prediction early on. I could see this team being a finals contender, if not another ring for Golden State coming up this year. But that'll do it for today's video of our power rankings. Uh, if you liked it, you know, hit that like button, make us do, do some more, you know, provide more NBA content. Um, until next time, though, the Bench Buddies are out.